Welcome to Atticon Plays Railway Empire. Now the railway has reached the most southern point, but the same is true as before. If this main line is not helpful for the whole region, nothing is gained. A station for each small village. All right, hi, this is Atticon, and welcome to Railway Empire, Northern Europe, Hibernation, The Lady, Episode 3. And uh, we just finished for our first two tasks. This could be the shortest episode I've ever done. But uh, we have three tasks. We have to go to the south, connect Malmo. With great satisfaction. Now there's I a third task. To announce a tremendous increase in passenger traffic. Now, even remote parts of the country are able to profit from the railway. I would like to call this an advantage of national organization. All right, it's so not we're done. about the transport of passengers, of course. Wherever tracks are laid, industry shall rise soon. So, take care of the upcoming tasks quickly. All right, so we're done. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we were so well set up that those three tasks were literally a gimme. Basically, what we had to do was set up, uh, connect to Malmo, and we had to uh, connect 11 total cities into our network. We already had 10. And we had to do a 650,000 krona in uh, profit, or revenue rather, in our passenger business. Well, our passengers have been averaging around one and a half million per quarter. So uh, those three were literally gimme. So I just uh, ran down to Malmo, made it the 11th city uh, real fast to get them all done so that we could quickly see what we have to do next. Now, what we have to do next, that's ah, a little harder. What we have to do now is, well, this first one's easy, and I'm going to take the super easy way out here, uh, the cheesy way out. Um, we have to connect 30 uh, rural stations to our network. So uh, just literally going down through here, picking them out and going. And uh, just tying them into the line, not worrying about running trains because I want to focus on the next two tasks. And it did open up this new uh, small end or whatever it is uh, here. And small end's interesting and I do have a plan in mind for how to attack it. I'll show you that in a second. But uh, now that we've opened it up, we can go grab some of those rural stations out there and get them connected. Now, this city here, this Carl's, Carl's Krona, has an export warehouse. And that export warehouse uh, exports brown cheese. Well, we now have a task to export 200 brown cheese um, rather quickly. Well, the way we're going to attack that is we don't have, we've got three small cities uh, plus Carl's Krona. There's four cities in that new region we just got. And we're going, and there's also a um, cattle uh, ranch or, or a, you know, I swear they got this backwards. A dairy farm out there that produces uh, milk. Well, all you need for cheese is milk. So we're going to go to all three of these other cities. And in two of the cases, these first two you're watching, this one here, Kalmar, we're going to buy out the little industry that's there, knock it down, and put in a cheese industry. And we'll go up here to Vimmerby, which doesn't have any industry at all, it's so small, and we're going to put a cheese industry in there. So now we've got three cheese industries right here in this region near the cheese export. And so we're going to buy the milk up here, and then we'll, all we have to do is set up a network where we can ship milk to the three cities that are making cheese and ship that cheese down to Karlskrona and uh, meet that task. It's super easy. Uh, it's, it's super easy if you, if you, if you have a plan. So uh, this first thing here, I'm going, to, I'm going to run a line up and connect it to our main trunk line. That's the big trunk line that's been going uh, Stockholm to Gutenberg. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is just so that when we connect these cities up, they will be part of the network and we'll be able to build, uh, connect more than one of the cities up. So um, there's a lot of ways we could move this stuff around. We could, you know, t move milk to each city and have inner city lines and, and run stuff down to the um, 
export warehouse that way. But what I chose to do just to do something different is have a centralized warehouse. And in that warehouse, we're going to take milk and cheese. And we're going to run milk down from um, the, uh, <laughs> the farm uh, up there. The cat, uh, it's so confusing because they call it, the cat. well, anyway, the place where we get the milk out there in, in the country. And we're going to run that milk down to this warehouse. And then we're going to have these lines like this. You see, we're going to put this line over to Calmar. And, uh, and it's just basically going to have a little shuttle, a couple of shuttle trains that run back and forth. So what it'll do is it'll go to the warehouse. It'll pick up milk, take it back to Calmar. Then it'll pick up the cheese that's, in, that's made in Calmar and take it back to that warehouse. So we're exchanging milk for cheese all the time. And we're going to do that three times. Once in Calmar, once in Voxjo or whatever, however you say that. And notice right there we got that message where we can't connect because we haven't connected Calmar to our network. It's because the next thing I should have done really before doing Calmar is this right here. Connect the milk all the way to the warehouse. And, I, and forgive me, I have to talk fast to describe all this because I, I ripped through this this whole uh, episode pretty pretty quickly because I really, uh, you know, I had a plan. <laughs> when you have a plan, it, it makes it a whole lot easier. So the cheese, I have a very definite plan for what I wanted to do. Um, so uh, basically, I'm just trying to build a, a line here that isn't, uh, uh, you know, putting in unnecessary tunnels and... and uh, um, bridges and, and, and what have you. And I, I really piddle with it more than I usually do. Um, I, the biggest thing was I just didn't bite the bullet and just get off the mountain. If you just get off the slopes and go to the flat, man, it's much easier. So there we go. There they're connected. And so now that what we did over there in Kalmar is, is actually connected to our network because of that little line up there that means the, the nothing line that goes up from between the milk and the, and the trunk line. So um, double track this, uh, the milk line so that we can start running milk um, down there. Now we want to be able to do the same thing with uh, Vimmerby. And all we need out of these, out of these little towns, this, this I, I really kind of glad I, I sort of came up with this approach. I'm glad they kind of forced us to think this way because this is really useful for if you have a good... Um, these are like specialty cities. You've, uh, in other videos, I've talked about specialty cities that do one s certain thing to serve other cities. Well, we've got three specialty cities that are specialized in cheese now. And they're tiny towns, but, but they have tremendous value because the three of them together is like, uh, you know, having three, uh, you know, a fairly high level um, cheese factory in a, in a bigger city. Uh, but the expense of setting them up is not that great. You know, some track and, and stations, and that's about it. And the warehouse in the center to, to make it all work. So um, setting up all these. And, and since we're playing on normal pause, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, I can set it all up together. Uh, if we were playing on Trainiac, I would, I would go up, set up the milk, and have it start running and filling up before I, I did any of this. But... Um, That'd be the only difference. So uh, uh, making sure we got the stuff. So there we go. There's our nice cheese network. It's basically we're going to run a bunch of trains to the warehouse. Actually going to end up running six. I didn't have a magic number in mind, but I want to make sure it was plenty. I want milk to always, once it gets going, I always want milk in that warehouse. So we're going to run six trains down there to start filling up the warehouse. And then we're going to run trains, as I said, said that we're like little shuttle trains back and forth between the small towns and, um, and the warehouse. So I look at the, I'm looking right here to see, all right, each one needs 0.8 milk. So 
that would be 2.4 total. The cattle can make two, so we want to make sure it makes more than that. So we're going to bump it up to four. So uh, that's the main reason I wanted to buy the cattle. But besides the fact that that uh, Lofgren cattle is going to make a lot of money, see, it's already making a profit because we're shipping off the milk. Well, besides the money, the money wasn't what I was after. We got money in our problem here. What I was after was the control to be able to say, okay, how much demand for milk is there out there in my network and how and can I want to get that milk immediately being produced at, at or above that rate so that I've got plenty of milk coming down there. So now we're starting to see the milk come down into the warehouse and now we can we can start putting in uh, lines back. And Vimmerby's a little farther away so I decided to run two trains to shuttle back and forth and I'm not going to, uh, because I use an auto signal um, uh, warehouse, I'm not going to let them run full. Now, now, a really more, honestly, a better design here would be, uh, well, I can't say better. A different design would be to have a large warehouse that didn't have signaling control. You've got three towns. Well, actually, no, I take that back. This was the best design because you've got three towns and the milk, and then we've got to have an exit. We've got to take the stuff out of that warehouse and move it down to um, uh, Carl's Krona. So that would be five. We need five sockets. So I like what we did. <laughs> All right. Well, I was going to say, if you, if you use the regular warehouse, you could set uh, trains to run full out of the warehouse with milk. But I, actually, that's a bad idea because the... Um, uh, towns themselves uh, won't take full loads all the time down there because sometimes they, they haven't processed enough of the milk to uh, justify a full load. So you're really better off with what we've done here, which is optional trains that are just shuttling back and forth. So we've got three shuttling back and forth to Vimmery, Vimmerby, two to uh, Voxco and, and uh, Roxjo and, and uh, two to uh, Calmar. And now we're going to set up our delivery line, the final delivery, which will take the finished product, the cheese, down to Carl's Krona and sell it at a terrific profit. So now, we're, now we've taken these three little villages and a cattle uh, ranch, connected them all up with a fairly small investment here, and it will just print money because it's going to deliver uh, as much cheese as these three factories can produce to um, Carl's Krona at a profit, and it's going to help us hit our goal. So I'm just waiting here for it needs to get started, right? You need to kind of get the get it going and and get the um, uh, cheese coming back to the warehouse. Here's here we're getting a, we're getting a little bit of cheese in there. And as soon as we have uh, one train load of cheese, then I'll fire up a train to start the delivery process to deliver the cheese down to uh, Karlskrona. I ended up running two trains there, uh, you know, to do the shuttle back to Karlskrona, and, and that's it. Now, now, if you wanted to, you could add to this network I would not advise it. I would advise setting up something separately if you wanted to grow these towns. You certainly could grow these towns. And in fact, if you were looking at this as money, again, we're not. We're looking at it as a specific objective to meet. But if you were looking at this as a money maker, you would want to set this up, start making the money, and then um, set up your city growth so that these three towns could become bigger cities and you could expand those businesses and make more money. <laughs> it's, that, it's that simple. So we have switched over to construction or uh, maintenance buildings now. So we're trying to put maintenance on all of our town stations and all of our warehouses. And even in some cases, even out on the uh, uh, raw material sites out, out in the country. Case in point right there. <laughs> Don't need professors anymore. We've got plenty of money.
Now, the deli delivery trains to Carl's Corona, that's a good place to put a security guard. Generally speaking, I'm at, at the point where I've quit worrying about uh, placement of employees. I've got too many to deal with. So I'm, I'm just uh, automatic, you know, just throwing them on there, and then if they fight, I fix it later. Now here we do have a traffic jam. This is being caused by that line we have that's running full up here in um, uh, Stockholm going to Gothenburg. It's not a good practice to have it run full all the time and it was there for a specific reason. Uh, but we also, this is the com this traffic jam right here was a combination of having all those trains show up there at the, at kinda at the same time and also having um, the snow hit, so uh, it, that will clear up. That 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 traffic jam will clear, and everything, and the, and the trains will move right on, no problem. And I and I, you know, you could go in and be a good thing to go in and and uh, um, take that run full off those trains. So now. What I'd really like to do, I've got to put the plant now. We're switching over to the furniture now. You got, you know, you got three things you have to do. You have to hook up those stations. We have to run that cheese, and we have to do the furniture. Furniture industry is much more complex. Um, so the, what I really want to do here is run the tool. I want to grow Gothenburg yet again. I want it to hit ninety thousand because. What I really love, ideal scenario, is to have the steel and the tool manufacturing in Gothenburg. I already got the steel there. We did that long ago. Uh, knowing that there was a, a furniture export site there and knowing we wanted to head toward furniture regardless of what objectives we may have gotten in the, in the uh, scenario. Well, the scenario, of course, came along and did exactly what we anticipated, which was say, okay, deliver furniture to this export warehouse. You can see it coming. So uh, we, we've got the steel in there. I want to have the tool. So the reason I'm putting salt in this um, uh, warehouse is for that is because of tools. As crazy as that may sound, I want to grow Gothenburg yet again. I want Gothenburg to be uh, a 90,000 city. So it's not. So remember we've been running steel out to uh, uh, Jonkoping to, uh, to that warehouse so we could make money on our steel business right off the bat. Well, what we're going to do now is, what, this is what I would planned way back when, which is start producing tools in Jonkoping. So we've run the steel to a warehouse. It's got access to tons of steel. And what we're going to do now is put a tool industry in, a tool maker in uh, Jonkoping. So now we can start making tools from that steel. And uh, it's, it's a small town. It hadn't grown very much, but uh, can absolutely take that steel and grow and, and produce more tools for us. So we'll set up the warehouse to also hold uh, tools in addition to the steel. And then the tools don't do us much good if they're just sitting there or maybe moving back to uh, uh, Gothenburg. So down here in Halmstad, we've got our, our sawmill. Well, the big thing in, in furniture in this supply chain is the, the lumber. You need a lot of lumber and you need some tools. Um, so we're going to buy that tailor, tailor, knock it down and put in a furniture industry. So now, Homestead is gonna be our furniture producer. It's already our um, lumber producer. And we, we've got, so we're going to uh, see how big a furniture industry we can get. We can get a level three, uh, which needs 3.2 lumber and uh, 1.6 tools. Well, we can produce 1.2 out of uh, Jean Coping. So that's not enough, but it's, it's a start. It can get us going. So we're going to uh, connect Jean Coping and Homestead so that we can get those tools down there to use in our furniture factory. And we're going to use a warehouse for this. And we're going to have a warehouse to warehouse kind of a line. And they can be a little tricky, but uh, it's, this one's not very complicated.
we're going to allow lumber and logs because I'm looking ahead to what else we need to do to really make that sawmill hum and we're going to allow tools and furniture so this warehouse here is going to be kind of our furniture warehouse it, it takes pretty all the components except the steel we don't need the steel down there because it is uh, used where we produce the tools we won't be doing tools down in uh, Homestad. it's not big enough for three industries but goltenberg is headed that way so uh, so we've got John Coping doing the tools. We're going to run tools down to this warehouse from John Coping. And, um, and that'll give us another piece of the pie we need for furniture. We need, remember, we need tools and we need um, lumber. Okay, so now we're going to set up a line warehouse to warehouse. As I said these are, can be tricky because sometimes you'll end up just moving stuff back and forth. It's the same stuff if you don't do it correctly. You'll just haul whatever back and forth. Uh, worthless, basically wasting your time. So we're going to set it up so that um, you only take, you, you, you take the tools out of that warehouse obviously and that's not a problem here really that uh, because we don't accept steel on the other end now up here we don't have to do anything but what we're going to do is set it to max zero in other words you're going deadhead back you're not taking anything back to the other warehouse and there you can see we've already got a nice full load of tools ready and we're just going to keep uh we're going to run several trains down there to uh, haul the tools. Now the next thing we need to do is make that sawmill hum. So we're going to buy the logging. And if you paid attention when we discussed the milk, you'll understand why we're buying the logging. We're going to buy the logging so we can control how much logs are produced. And we're going to set up our logs to go over to that warehouse. double track it into the warehouse and start hauling logs into the warehouse that can then be used by our sawmill. Now the sawmill that we put in down there uh, is actually has been just getting overland logs and just you know doing piddly business up until now but it's about to take off because we're going to start supplying it with plenty of logs and uh, then that sawmill not only is it going to get plenty of logs but it's got a customer right there it can it can sell its logs if you will to that furniture industry right away so that sawmill is going to be very profitable and very vital if we're going to be delivering 200 uh, furniture into Gothenburg and I don't know if I even said this it's 200 furniture to Gothenburg it's 200 uh, brown cheese to uh, Karlskrona and it's 30 stations so we're going to run a bunch of trains to make sure we keep those logs flowing down there. And we see we need 3.2 um, lumber. And what I'm going to do here is actually double up on that because lumber can also be used uh, elsewhere. Other, others, you know, like uh, Gothenburg needs lumber as well. So now we need, just need to make sure that we're getting at least 6.4 uh, production up there in the logs. So we just keep expanding in, uh, the station in the logs until it's uh, at or above 6.4. And now we'll have a steady supply of logs going to the lumber. The lumber's bumped up enough to give a steady supply of lumber to the um, furniture and the furniture is maxed out it's it's going as fast as it can go because we know we have a weekly demand of seven at that export warehouse which we can't even meet we can't even build them that fast so i'm looking into do i want to go back and do another furniture industry somewhere else i decided to just stick with what we've got and, and watch it hum for a bit and see how it goes so uh, there we're starting to get the cheese the cheese is starting to work we're already we've already delivered 45 uh, units down there 
And there, there you see I've, I've gone to lazy man staffing because it's just too much work. And ah, here we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We're going to put that promoter yet again on Gothenburg and try to grow Gothenburg. We really, really want it to hit 90,000. If it hits 90,000, we are golden. Even if it doesn't, we're, we're in good shape because we've done the thing with John, job com, job coping. And we've got the, uh, or John Kipping, whatever it is, <laughs> whatever that town is, uh, we've got the uh, um, tools being made. But the tools are, would hold us back. If we didn't build any more tool production anywhere else, then the tools would limit how fast we can go. And what we want to do is optimize this so that the ultimate one, the furniture, is the one that's holding us back, so to speak. We want it to be the governor on on. Uh, our production and we want everything feeding it to be at, at or above its requirements. Now we're going through, while, while we've got that, while we're waiting on that and, and uh, fixing it up, we're going to go ahead and knock out that other task, which is just, like I said, the cheesy one or the way I'm doing it. Uh, we're just going to find ones that are close to our main lines and, and hook them in. And all you have to do is just touch them. You know, you don't have to have, we don't have to signal them or put stuff on them or uh, you know towers or do anything use them we don't have to use them at all we just have to have them so I'm, I'm going to do that to knock out this uh, connect 30 and of course if we were playing this without time limits and without uh, uh, task and we were just growing our business we wouldn't well first of all we wouldn't do this at all we would just be looking for opportunities what's the next thing we can do to build another you know to grow another city to uh, pr create more demand and where can I go get the supply but in this case we are just literally just adding them on because we need to add them on here we need one more so we'll grab this these logs and I think here yeah I, I know I did uh, actually ran a few logs into Vimmerby just <laughs> just as a as a concession to the fact that these the, these uh, rural stations have purpose now, the rural businesses are able to transport their commodities into cities much faster, and therefore they are producing larger quantities. Excellent. So we'll run one train with logs into Vimmerby. There we go. All right, there, another, another task down. So we still got our cheese and we've got our furniture. We haven't delivered any furniture yet, and we're waiting on tools. And we know the tools are on the way because we saw them come out of that warehouse and start their way down. So they just haven't arrived yet. And here it looks like, there, you notice we got some and they were immediately consumed. So as soon as they went into the furniture, or into the warehouse, they were consumed by the furniture industry. So now we should be producing uh, furniture. And you can see we're, we're hauling lumber up to uh, Gothenburg now, and Gothenburg grows. Hallelujah. Here we go. Now we can hit the tool makers and throw them in Gothenburg, and tools are no longer our problem. So now we're creating 2.4 in um, Gothenburg and 1.6, I think it was, in the other, in uh, the, the J town, whatever it is. So... Um, what we're going to do now is set up this warehouse so it'll take tools and furniture. And we're going to set up uh, shuttle trains that run between our warehouse down here in Homestead and our warehouse up there at uh, Gothenburg. So all we have to do to do that is just hook up the lines, run, run over here and connect into the main trunk line that runs up to uh, Gothenburg to Homestead. There we go, and uh, now we'll set up another warehouse to warehouse line. And in this one, we do not want to carry um, the, anything but the lumber, right? We want to take lumber up to Gothenburg. And then coming back, we don't want to take tools, although they're, not, they're going to get consumed very, very quickly by the city by the end of export warehouse and anything else you see there you can bring back
and it'll mostly bring back tools, but anything, anything you see there that you like, grab it. So we'll run several trains to do that, to haul that stuff up. And you can see we've, we've, uh, we've now started exporting, or well, yeah, <laughs> almost literally, we've started taking uh, furniture up there. Now I've got one design flaw here. I've got that track coming in with that um, uh, tower there, uh, supply tower, it's poorly placed, and need to set it up so that we can get one more train out of there. Because the reason we have a stall here is if there's a train in this platform that the tra next, very next train happens to want to go into, then uh, you have a traffic jam here. So I need to add one signal. That wasn't quite far enough back. Here we go. Then we add one signal to let that train come out and that opens everything up so now everybody can move and uh, everything should flow nicely there. Uh, that was a bad design. There's too much going on there, too many um, places trains can stop. It would actually be better, it'd be better if that supply tower wasn't there, uh, frankly. It would be better to move the, have two supply towers, one on each of those lines that are coming in rather than having trying to save money and, and share them like that. But anyway, you can see we're producing some tools now. They're, the uh, warehouse has a, a tool of, available. We'll watch this train come in. Now, did you see the, did you see the uh, furniture go up and then immediately go right back down to zero because it got instantly consumed by the city, basically by that export warehouse. And, and Gothenburg itself will consume some as, uh, as well, but um, I think it's big enough to need furniture. I'm not, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Um, but it doesn't matter because we're so we're selling it all if you will. So now we've got ourselves a furniture industry We've got we've got a beautiful cheese uh, industry going over there uh, North of Karlskrona we and Homstad is is now producing furniture at a nice rate for us You can see we've got 14 ready to uh, pick up there in the warehouse uh, right now So I just want to make sure we've got plenty of trains running to keep that stuff moving. And not interested in the weaving factory in Stockholm. And you can see we've got lumber. We we're, The logs were actually, we're getting down to zero in logs in the warehouse, but then keep in mind that the um, sawmill itself has its own internal warehouse so it purchases if you will all those logs and stores them in its own internal warehouse so we actually have a number of logs in the city and you can see here we have now started to outstrip our opponents big time we're almost triple the largest uh, competitor and we're way many 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 times bigger than the other two so we're in good shape we we're, we're not going to be worried about ai competitors I don't play back. I don't pay blackmail. So um, our furniture industry is now well supplied. We are creating furniture at a clip, a 3.2 clip. We've delivered 14. You can see we're over halfway done with our cheese already, even though we only have those little towns helping us out. So our cheese is looking really good. Our furniture is looking really good as well. I'm gonna set up a couple more uh, shuttle trains to make sure that we're, sh we're shipping that uh, furniture out of there as fast as we can make it. And as long as we don't bog down the system and get so many trains running that they actually start slowing each other down, we're fine. And that's really what I'm checking here. I'm just following the lineup through there, making sure we're not seeing any huge delays or pileups of trains and stuff like that. And it all seems to be working very nicely. Of course, having these automated signals on these uh, platforms is really great because now you got you know four times the throughput almost. So now we're up to 46 already. We're looking really good.
So at this point, I'm practically just watching myself play. I mean, it's just, it's just like uh, uh, we got this nail. We've got, we we're producing furniture at a good clip. Uh, the only thing in my mind is, do I want to go build another furniture industry somewhere? And I decide, no. I, I, this is this is excellent. I want to see this work. I want to see how it goes. And um, I, I think that uh, let's just spend this the little the few minutes we got left here, uh, w w waiting for this to finish play out. Uh, talking about uh, one of the kind of concept that I think the uh, character selection when you're deciding what character you want to uh, play first of all I pick the one you'll enjoy playing period uh, you know forget the results just to pick the one that gives you the most pleasure to play if you like to build industries pick Roger if you want to if you want to screw with your opponents pick Don Lorenzo it doesn't matter just do what you want but if you want to figure it out in terms of what's the best I could do what's the best guy I could get think about the start because it's the starting of the scenario that matters. The rest of it doesn't matter. Once you get a money-making machine, and by the way, you can have a money-making machine with any of the characters. All you have to do is play well. I mean, <laughs> I know that sounds a little silly, but play well and you will make lots of money with any of the characters. The whole point is, how do you start? What do you do to start? The reason the lady is so good is because all you need, passenger mail with those bonus cars between a few cities and she prints money. It's that simple. The reason Don Lorenzo is good is because he gets the freight bonus and if you've got a situation where you can grab freight early and run short freight lines to some decent cities then he's going to be great. So a bigger uh, a, a map that starts you with a decent city Don Lorenzo can really get off to a great start. But then of course so can the lady because she can just take that big city traffic and move it out to the small cities and vice versa and make a lot of money. Uh, Doc is always great because uh, those cheap trains you can spam trains easily so if your style is similar to mine where you run a lot of trains uh, Doc is just awesome uh, uh, Roger um, how would you do Roger Roger is uh, you know uh, he's not as strong because his strength comes in too late so his strength is industry right well the thing is you need some money to re really get into the industry mode the way these scenarios set up you typically uh you know you're not in the industry mode yet and so he's really strong later but later's too late because you're already strong if you're if you're a decent player you're already strong by the time roger is really kicks in so roger more like do you want to enjoy playing with him then fine go for it um, who's that leave? Uh, the general. The general. Uh, the general. My problem with the general is um, he's strong. Obviously, that discount on track is great because track's your biggest expense, uh, biggest single ticket item early in the game. So that's the good thing. The bad thing with him is he doesn't get any discount on the train. So if you discount the track, and I still have to buy fifty thousand uh, krona or fifty thousand dollar or whatever map you're playing uh, trains, um, that, that can be tough. So he's got that track discount. That's good, but I don't play him much for that reason because he doesn't get anything else, really. He doesn't get employees. He just, uh, yeah, not much there. And then Trixie was always my favorite in the original set. I love Trixie, but uh, after they nerfed her and kind of changed her around, uh, she's uh, arguably the weakest one because she has no no nothing she has nothing to help her up front really uh auction discounts man um a lot of spies um she actually i think people are really worried about her research i actually think you know you can get so many spies with her as long as you're making money you can buy your research you can just steal it uh so she's not that bad that way but she has no other redeeming value so She's the hardest, toughest one to play, so she'd be a good one to play if you want to make it more challenging. So anyway, I, enough of that. I'm just babbling because there's nothing to tell you here. I'm 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 just following the game now and watching watching it succeed, if you will, and uh, hoping that it's fast enough to to get us going. And I know it is. I know we're gonna we're only in June of 1859, and our target is 1865. So uh, I think we'll make it. I really do think we'll make it. Our target's 1866 for the brown cheese. We're going to make that easily.
So I'm going to let this keep going. I'm really tempted to just go fast forward here, but I know how some of you groan when I go into fast forward. I'm just going to let this run, and I'm just going to take a break, and I'll come back toward the end and, and wrap up. Splendid. Demand for Swedish commodities is on the rise. Thanks to the railway, commodities can be exported much better in ports now. This opens up access to international markets even for smaller cities. So there we go. We just got our uh, cheese uh, goal hit. And uh, the good news is now it's just going to keep making money. Uh, and all those little factories, the cheese industries are making money, the dairy is making money, the trains are making money to deliver it. Uh, it's just going to keep making money. You can see we're up to 167 on our furniture already. Now we do have this city here that I haven't connected, so I thought, ah, why not? I got nothing else to do. So uh, I'm going to run it, set up a passenger mail line between Malmo and this new city. Um, I got to look to catch the name of it. Sorry, uh, but we'll just run a simple little passenger mail line to Christianstad uh, from Malmo. Make sure there's no uh, unnecessary tunnels or bridges and go. And, uh, and we'll run four trains back and forth, passenger mail only, give them the cars. They'll make, they'll make surprisingly large amounts of money with the lady, uh, even though the, you know, the two cities aren't that impressive. And, and here, you know, if, if we wanted to, we could throw a business in here and grow these cities. Of course we could. But uh, I would strongly recommend... As a, you know, if you're a new or intermediate player and you're having any trouble whatsoever with these scenarios, focus on the task at hand. Don't get distracted by the fact that, oh, I need to grow this city over here that's irrelevant. Don't, don't spend your time doing other stuff when you could be spending your time doing exactly what you need to do to hit your objectives. You need to be laser focus to hit those objectives timely in this game and i think some people um i don't know if you enjoy playing um uh sandbox then play sandbox uh i enjoy being time boxed i enjoy having the, the challenge of this but uh, you know play it however you want to <laughs> You can see that furniture industry has already made us one and a half million krona, sawmill 770,000 krona. Uh, the steel industry has not made as much, 367,000. But remember, it still isn't getting used as much. But I, I, we're just we're just making money all over the place here. We're making money with our industry, with our passengers, with our mail, with everything. Now I'm going to go backwards in time uh, and grab some uh, research from prior, the prior ages out there. They always cost you 300 when you go back into this the era before, but it was. So exporting. there we go. I love it this is reference. Not even fully assembled. Who will buy something like this? <laughs> I like that Our IKEA Norwegian reference. Our neighbors are impressed by the progress here in Sweden, and they asked for support in modernizing their infrastructure. Please take care of this matter immediately. All right, so next episode, we will head up to Norway. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe, and join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.